Do you have peace? Sometimes this place that I live is uh, so peaceful. That if it weren't for the times in the morning when there's old vehicles using that emergency backup or different things to help handicapped people, I'd just probably come out and sit on this porch and do nothing. <laughs> it's just peaceful like a blanket. Now we have a apartment complex next door and across the way, but just somehow, certain times, everybody's gone and it's just peaceful, like a blanket, almost smothering peace. I I walk out from the computer and uh, come out here on the porch to check the tomato plants or you know to do things to set things up for summer and spring and I'm so overwhelmed by peace that it just oh, no thought no action no reaction just oh. and for someone like me who's always got thought <laughs> always thinking It's a little amazing because it's just quiet, calm, almost, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just good. You know, it's in the shady side, so I get the morning sun, but man, if there was sunshine coming in right now, I'd be out like a light. I'd probably build me a hammock and sit in it all day long. Just think about God and talk to Him. You ever have days where you want to do that? Just get a rocking chair, which is on our list, by the way. <laughs> I told my wife, I said, you know, this would be heaven on earth if I find me a rocking chair. Because, man, I'm going to get a rocking chair and I'm just going to sit there and rock. We're building a table like in a half moon you know kind of half circle like a bar that we could um, stand up in our kitchen because the windows a little high we've got these giant kitchen windows and we want to put a kitchen table in there and sit at it like a bar stools and just look out you know on the afternoons and enjoy the sunshine and the peace It's just nice. I know we've got so much room in the living room that we've already planned on having home Bible studies there. And haven't really decided how to get that going yet. Lord hasn't really shown us, but it's coming. Then we've got like this long hallway, which has a sliding door that closes, and then there's doors off of the hallway that, when you close them and you close the siding, it's dark in there. And God kind of spoke to me and said, "That's I want you to pray in there." So that's my prayer closet, so to speak. So I can close it all off and it gets real quiet and dark. And I can just pray like, you know, we ought to, you know, away from everybody. No distractions. Just some quiet time. And then we have this little closet that goes off to the side of that. That's a walk-in closet, you know, for kind of like a pantry or, I don't know, like a broom closet. It's pretty big. You can walk even in there like an inner even more of an inner place off of that hallway. It's even darker in there where I went in and I closed the door and I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. And I thought, ooh, this is like a holy of holies. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so I have to admit, I'm, I'm blessed. You know, it's the simple things that really get to me. The things that only God can create that only God can do. You know, I thank God for that. I really do. I 
I'm so glad that he has brought into my life things of peace. I am great at dealing with stress. You know, I'm usually the guy, you know, like first responder kind of thing, you know. Deal with that, no problem. But uh, peace is kind of kind of different. You don't do anything about peace. You just enjoy it. And I like that. I kind of like that. Tozer today gives us a real good example of enjoying God for who He is, for what He is, to just accept Him as He is. And I think sometimes, you know, we get too carried away about trying to do things or change ourselves that so sometimes we forget to just be with God, just as we are, the way we are. You know, kind of accept ourselves and let it go. I always smile at this guy. He's got a bicycle with a little motor on it. And he put some angel wing handlebars on it. Which is humorous because it's a bicycle <laughs> with a gas tank. Bicycle, not motorcycle. <laughs> it's like something from Taiwan or somewhere. <laughs> but I think we ought to be mindful that even though we live in latter days and there's so much that we could do, Sometimes there's things we ought not to do so that we would be doing what God wants us to do. And that means sometimes just you know, chilling. And like, hey man, in Jamaica, you know, we don't take it so serious. It's like, you know, the breezes come and the sneezes go. And, you know, we just know that it's just relax, no problem. You know, like they talk about. Kind of, you always see that in Jamaica or something. But well, we learned that in Alaska. It was kind of, in the winter, you don't worry about doing anything in a hurry. <laughs> you take your time. And I think maybe... That's what God wants us to do is change our ideas of time so that we don't go running so much as we experience Him. So we just be with God today. God blesses His children for holy intentions. Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me. John 8:54. Then that honor me, I will honor, said God once to a priest of Israel. And that ancient law, the kingdom, stands today unchanged. By the passing of time or the changes of dispensation, the law is still the same. Them that honor me, I will honor. The whole Bible and every page of history proclaim the perpetuation of that law. If any man serve me, him will my Father honor, said our Lord Jesus, tying in the old with the new and revealing the essential unity of his ways with men. It seems plain that almost any Bible character who honestly tried to glorify God in his earthly walk was so honored. If he tried, God honored him. See how God overlooked weaknesses and failures as he poured upon his servants grace and blessings untold? Let it be Abraham or Jacob, David or Daniel, Elijah or whom you will, and honor followed honor as harvest follows the seed. The man of God set his heart to exalt God above all. God accepted his intention as fact and acted accordingly. The man of God set his heart to exalt Not perfection, but holy intention made the difference. Irregardless of how he was, he was trying and seeking to serve the Lord. <laughs> and in so doing, God honored that intention because it's the attitude and the desires of the heart that God saw in each one of those men. 
Because we could look at Abraham and say, no, he wasn't perfect. We can look at Jacob and say, nope, not perfect. David, no, not perfect. Daniel, uh uh. Elijah, no way, man of like passions. So, who was perfect of all these men that wanted to serve the Lord with all their heart? None of them. So, you see, we really can't accept ourselves as much as God really accepts us. In our Lord Jesus Christ, this law was seen in simple perfection. He sought not his own honor, but the honor of the God who sent him. If I honor myself, he said on one occasion, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honors me. So far had the proud Pharisees departed from the law that they could not understand one who honored God at his own expense. People use that word honor God sometimes to mean money, and it, it really doesn't. It just means seeking God and His and loving Him so much that you really want to just manifest him or reveal him or to show him in a special unique way in a way that gives that with which you know God desires him to be known revealed and not concealed to be the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob known to all of men through his son who has come to reveal the father to us so it's kind of nice when we can take the time and make the time to sit still, to be still, to be at peace, not just with ourselves, but with God our Maker. I don't know about you, but I know for me, I, uh, I think sometimes I get too hard on wanting to do more and not satisfied with less. Wanting to achieve more and not getting more done. Wanting to distribute more and not recognizing what I've done is enough. Are you like that? Do you always want to do more, be more, accomplish more? You know, I'm, I'm not so worried because I've learned a long time ago to not care about numbers and, you know, how many people like, dislike, or how many people have, you know, subscribed, or how many people go to your website, or keeping track of all these, ir keeping track of all these things that are, are not important to God. I was going to say irresponsible, but it's not irresponsible. I was going to say they're, they're, they, they don't matter. They're just meaningless to God. He's not interested in what your numbers are. He's interested in what your heart is. So whenever you're trying to do things for God or with God or you know, sharing in the ministry or doing something that you maybe pick on yourself a little bit, slow down, let it alone, leave it to God. Because sometimes, you know, a plant will produce one fruit. But man, when you eat that sucker, if it's delicious, you'll remember. And then you'll want to grow that fruit again. I think that's kind of what God wants to do with each one of us. He loves our first love and he wants us to be like that first fruit that we gave up of our lives so that we would always have that desire to give up our lives all the days of our life and not just the first time we met Jesus. I think he wants us to be in love with him like we were in the beginning. So that way the end would be like it was in the beginning and the beginning will be like it was in the end and the first shall be last. And the last shall be first. Let that be a lesson. Maybe go back to your first love. Maybe kind of enjoy God again, you know, all over again in a new way that really is the old way that you used to be on the day that you said, Yes, Jesus.